obviously for us that are based in the UK, we know that uh, Brexit and queues of Dover are, are very much top of headlines at the moment. So I'm going to ask a question related to the, the European Union uh, and Europe. We're, as we all know, here in the UK, we're no longer part of the European Union. Does this help or hinder UK-based startups, in your opinion? So if we can put this in a European context. Josh, I'm going to start with you with this one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to say hinder. <clears throat> um, it, uh, and I think really that comes down to the fact that we've operated really on on both sides of, of, of Brexit really kicking in uh, that date, the 30, was it the 1st of January 2021, uh, when it all changed and we had an ongoing programme uh, at the time and we were um, understandably uh, quite a segment of our supply chain is within the European Union uh, and we literally had a key piece of test equipment get stuck at customs uh, to the point where essentially we could just no longer deliver that part of the program in the time frame that the customer was looking for us to do so. Uh, so I have experienced that pain firsthand um, and obviously it, it has made some elements um, of recruitment and relations more difficult such as seeking export licenses to, to work with the European Space Agency um, is a pain that we didn't anticipate when we first started. But what I, the one thing that I would say has surprised me where it is working better is recruitment um, because uh, of, of the way that really the visa process has worked when trying to recruit high skilled jobs like engineers. Um, we've actually gotten pretty good at that process now. Um, so across, across our team, we represent 17 different countries. Anthony? Yeah, like, like Joss, we, we've, in the hiccups of, uh, of uh, post-Brexit, we have lost equipment or had it delayed and it has been a, a logistical problem. But I would rather look at how we're going to address this issue and uh, yeah, means we'll have to treat it like going to the US, we might have to open a, an office in Europe or, or something like that, but maybe we would have done anyway. Um, things like if, if Copernicus gets completely cancelled and that money gets uh, uh, turned to or, or not not sent to, sent to that program and, and the government decides to do something else with it, I think that's a golden opportunity for, for local companies that they can really choose themselves independently without some overhead and direct it to uh, the most promising companies. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, if that scenario occurs, that it's the money spent wisely. So there are opportunities here and I think we have to grasp them. Lee, what's it like for um, someone that's looking to, to launch in a pretty competitive market already? Yeah, for sure, uh, and, and definitely uh, agree with what Josh and Anthony had to say about kind of the the, uh, the, the issues we have uh, with 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 the Brexit issue, and um, you know, finding ways around it. I think is is the important piece. And you know, when, when a satellite goes into orbit, it, it doesn't have to ask permission to cross a boundary, right? It just does. And I think we as as space entrepreneurs have to be the same way. Uh, we need to figure this out. We need to figure out, um, you know, the ITAR restrictions. We need to figure out MCTR restrictions. All of those kind of things, and and learn how to play in this, in whatever field we're dealt in. And it's it's definitely makes it uh, more complicated, but hopefully uh, it, it makes us think a little bit faster on our feet and 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 find innovative solutions. I mean, space is, is part of the global economy and we have to be able to cross those borders relatively seamlessly. Tony? Yeah, I think it's <clears throat> double-edged. You know, it's presented some serious problems uh, and we were going through the same thing. We had a satellite to launch and we had equipment in various places stuck in various warehouses. I think actually for us, it was just a matter of getting everyone to fill the right piece of paperwork in. Um, you know, eventually it's it's resolvable. I think overall, um, actually, it's probably stimulated a bit more in the UK, uh, the UK centric market. So the upside is that there's a little bit more focus from in the UK, uh, from the UK government and, uh, and, and the investment community. And there are still opportunities, you know, civil security from space. Uh, RFI that came out from ESA, there's 
a big opportunity in that program <clears throat> for a number of UK players. So again, yeah, I think it's just one of those things in global space world you just got to navigate your way through. It's just another another one of those hurdles that you put on the list of, okay, I've got to check this, I've got to check that, I've got this license to get. It's just a bit more paperwork. <laughs>